Colon cancer diagnoses are rising at an alarming rate, 15 percent among adults ages 18 to 50. This underscores the need for more accessible screening options. The FDA recently approved a blood test for colon cancer, and joining us now to talk about that and making screening more accessible is Dr. Saad Huck. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Kelly. Thank you for having me. We appreciate your being here. I want to just off the top get you to respond to that latest development regarding Steny Hoyer, please. Certainly uh, very concerning news, uh, but the positive aspect of the story is that from what the news, news reports suggest, this was an ischemic uh, stroke where he is apparently uh, recovering well from a lack of blood supply to the brain. This happened apparently for a short period of time. So hopefully he will come back out of this with minimal to none residual effects. Uh, I think he's expected to make a full recovery. Very good. Thank you so much for addressing that. Let's get back to colon cancer screenings and the accessibility problem. What barriers are keeping certain groups from accessing the screenings that they need? So primarily, uh, Kelly, the main issue is the um, difficulty in getting screenings because the primary and the best test that we have as of today is a colonoscopy. A colonoscopy, as a lot of your viewers probably know, is a very cumbersome test where it involves fasting the night before, taking a certain laxative, and then coming in for the procedure, getting anesthesia, and taking time off from work. Um, even though this is the best test, it's not that easy to do. Uh, the compliance is about 60% of what it needs to be. We are constantly looking for other forms of testing which are much easier to perform. Um, one of these is, of course, this blood test, which is just like any other blood test that your viewers probably get with their doctor's offices. Um, and it helps find cancer in 83% of patients who may actually have cancer. So this is an excellent screening test. Yes, I was reading a little bit about it, and I was seeing that although it's been very successful, it's not as good at detecting advanced precancerous lesions. One study found only 13% effective. What are your recommendations considering that, and how does that affect the way you screen your patients and what you're asking them to do? So that's a very good point. I think the best test remains a colonoscopy. Um, our recommendation as a, a gastroenterologist will always be to perform a colonoscopy if possible, but that because of the barriers that we just discussed, if that is not possible, a reasonable second option would be this blood test uh, that would suffice. Um, in the event that this blood test comes back positive, your viewers should understand that then they have to proceed with a colonoscopy. Then we are obligated to look inside and make sure that there are no precancerous lesions like you uh, were referring to, which we call polyps. And if there are, a colonoscopy is a great modality because not only does it diagnose them, but it, they can be removed in the same session. So it's an extraordinarily useful technique. All right, so for some patients out there, cost is a barrier. So what do you recommend for someone who thinks they uh, cannot afford to have the necessary screenings? So. This particular test is going to be covered by Medicare. Um, and I know that there are a lot of programs out there, especially in our hospital. We also have this program where we are able to offer screenings to our local residents at minimal cost. Um, this is one of the great things about BHC, where we are trying to improve accessibility to care to all the people in our community. Okay, that is Dr. Saad Huck, a specialist at VHC Health. We thank you again for joining us today. Thank you for having me.